I'm joined now from The Hague by Professor Lawrence Jan Brinkhorst, who's also a former member of the European and the Netherlands Parliament. Professor, uh, first of all, welcome. There was a lot of talk before this election that this wave of anti-establishment populism would sweep into the Netherlands. Clearly, that did not happen. What does that tell you about Dutch voters? We should add the voter turnout was high, in fact, the highest number in some 30 years. Well, at the end of the day, I think uh, the Dutch pop population indicated that they were quite reasonable. If we hadn't had uh, Brexit, if we hadn't had President Trump and the chaos which has been resulting both in Britain and in the United States, maybe Mr. Wilders would have had a chance. But it is very clear that at the end of the day, the Dutch are a founding member of the European Union. We have benefited enormously of international trade. We have benefited, as you indicated, of becoming one of the richest countries in Europe, uh, and the integration over 50, 60 years was at stake. So for that reason, I think at the end of the day, Mr. Rutte was able to convince, plus a number of other parties like my own, which is a, a Liberal Democratic Party in the Netherlands, uh, that it would not be a wise thing to give Mr. Rutte, maybe Mr. Wilders, the lead, uh, maybe to the disappointment of a lot of the Anglo-Saxon press, but that is it. Uh, very interesting is, that three minutes after the uh, outcome was declared, uh, Mrs. Le Pen in uh, France had 3% less of the public vote. It does indicate that there's something like a European public audience, and that is the reason I think that most other leaders have complimented, have congratulated uh, Prime Minister Lata, uh, Rutte. So, Professor, what happens moving forward with this right-wing politician here to Wilders and his message? He wanted. Uh, to stop uh, Muslim immigration, close all mosques. He wanted to ban the Koran. Clearly, his message did resonate with some voters in the Netherlands. Yes, of course. Uh, of course, people who are suffering at present uh, from the effect of globalization, uh, the, typically the, the, the white workers uh, who also supported Mr. Trump, uh, are against immigration, are concerned about their own future. Uh, and there are reasons for that. But you cannot simply stop globalization by declaring that the whole is Islam is an is a ideology uh, which is contrary to uh, the public interest. Uh, of course, we must fight jihadism, we must fight terrorism, uh, but to put them all into one bag is a bit simplistic. And I think at the end of the day, that is what the Dutch public understood. We are too dependent on the rest of our compatriots and the rest of Europe. And we are also dependent, frankly speaking, on the labor provided by Turkish and Moroccan workers who came here 50 years ago and who have been well established. More than 80, 90 percent of those who've come are useful citizens. They work publicly, uh, properly, uh, and they do not make any mistakes. And so against that background, I think that message uh, didn't resonate very well. Uh, Professor, how much do you believe the diplomatic spat with Turkey helped the incumbent prime minister? Well, uh, I think there's still some speculation about it, but I think it did have an impact. Uh, uh, the extraordinary statements by uh, President Erdogan uh, that uh, the Holland uh, had killed 8,000 Muslims, uh, Bosnians, uh, that uh, uh, we were uh, exercising Nazi practices, uh, had absolutely a shocking effect on the Netherlands, and I think it stiffened the back of uh, the Prime Minister, and I think both opposition leaders and the current government uh, were standing firm. Uh, so, but it had, I think, an impact to indicate only that extremism, whether coming from Turkey or from, whether coming from Mr. Wilders, uh, doesn't pay. Uh, and I think against that background, uh, it is indeed the outcome which uh, became, became as a kind of relief, uh, and that relief, I think, is resonating throughout the whole of Europe. All right, we'll leave it there. Thank you so much, Lawrence Jan Brinkhorst, former European and Netherlands Parliament member and professor. Thank you so much.